Hello and welcome to Happier, a podcast where we discuss strategies and suggestions for how to make life happier. This week, we will reveal our one word themes for 2023 and we'll discuss listeners answers to the question, have you ever had an uncanny experience? I'm Gretchen Rubin, a writer who studies happiness, the five senses, the four tendencies, good habits, and human nature. I'm here in my little home office in New York City, and joining me today from L.A. is my sister Elizabeth Kraft. And Elizabeth, how is the COVID? That's me, Elizabeth Kraft, a TV writer and producer living in L.A. And Gretch, yes, I'm happy to report I think we're all better from the COVID. So, yay. Yeah, you sound a lot Very better. Happy. You were really raspy yeah. for a while. Yeah, I think, I think I'm think i better now. Oh, good. Well, a few updates before we launch in. First of all, Happier has been nominated for a Signal Award. That's very exciting. The Signal Awards seek to honor and celebrate the people and content that raise the bar for podcasting. Mm. And in the first annual Listener's Choice Award, <clears throat> Happier has been nominated in the self-improvement and self-help category. So if you Yay. have the time and inclination, yeah, please consider voting for us at vote.signalaward.com. Voting ends December 22nd. All right. Yay. And then, Gretch, we also had an update from Patricia, who says she's an upholder. She said, in response to your 400th episode, I was amazed that there was no outpouring of affection for the power hour. This technique has helped me plan student travel abroad, redecorate my house, and prepare for the holidays in one-hour increments. I -hmm. don't use it as much to see how many big errands I can accomplish in an hour, but to chip away at big projects. A year and a half ago, I had a very bad ankle fracture requiring two surgeries. The power hour helped me get going on big projects again when I felt that I didn't have the strength to spend a whole day painting, for instance. Could I do an hour? Yes. Great. Well, I love power hours. So it's good to hear that. That was episode 400 where we asked people what had resonated the most with them. So that's great. Throw in power hour. Yes. Okay. I am so excited for this week's Try This at Home because this is one of our favorite subjects to talk about, Elizabeth. And that is to choose your one word or one phrase theme for the year. So for the last several years, we've picked our words for the year. And Elizabeth, before we reveal our words for 2023, let's reflect on our 2022 words. So remind everybody about you had a great word this year. So my word was step. Yeah. And it was very fitting because I thought of it when you and I were taking a walk in Central Park. Yes, we were together. That moment I remember still. I do too, where I remember exactly where you were when you were like stepping forward and you were like, Wait, I just had an idea. Yes. Yeah, we texted yes, ourselves exactly. it so we wouldn't yes. forget. Yes. And it's been a good word. You know, I used it for stepping, literally stepping and taking steps to just get in my 10,000 steps a day. Also, stepping into the future, which is yeah. one of my absolute favorite phrases. And I think I did step into the future and I did step a lot. So I think it was a good word. I don't know if it was my absolute best word I ever had, Mm. but it was a good, solid word. Mm -hmm. How about you? So my word was salt, and I was inspired by you because you often have a more metaphorical, like a number six, which was like kind of mysterious. Um, And I had very workmanlike words like infrastructure. Uh So I wanted to try something more poetic. So I picked salt. And this turned out to be one of my all-time favorite words. Yes. Partly because, you know, I'm I'm working on a book about the five senses. And so I was thinking a lot about taste. And salt is magic. It's this this taste enhancer. Plus, it's necessary for life. It's useful for purification. It's useful for preservation. It's the only rock that we eat. So it's unusual, and it plays this almost mystical role in our lives. It just pervades everything. And in fact, just the other day, Betty wrote and said, I'm a feng shui consultant and we use salt to absorb the negative energy within our space. So there's just all these ways that salt, you know, like I'm all into preserving memories and it is a preservative and I'm thinking about how to make taste better and it's a taste enhancer. And then I would come across it in these odd ways, like in the book Summer by Karl Uwe Knausgaard, he wrote, sugar cares only about itself. Salt brings out the best in others. 
So I thought, well, that's mm. a good that's a good motto mm. for me. And then Alyssa, of course, you gave me my salt T-shirt, which is in the wash, or I would be wearing it right now, which I was like, how'd you get a salt T-shirt? Yeah. And you're like, it's half of a salt and pepper costume. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was so I, I got my little my visual reminder too. So I love salt. Well, what's interesting to me, Gretchen, is in doing your book about the five senses, you were really wanting to enhance your own sense of the senses, right? Yes. Yes. And I feel like choosing salt is an example yep. of how you have done that. You have brought yeah. more spice to your life. So yeah, it was yeah. a good one. I feel like that's one that's going to stick. Like salt's yes. just one of your words now. I really feel that way. I do feel like this special connection, even like a salt shaker. I like feel this special vibe <laughs> with it. So we asked listeners for their ideas. And as always, we got so many great ideas. So let's go through a lot of them, Elizabeth. Yes. Jackie said choosing fresh, as in fresh start, fresh air, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, fresh flowers, fresh eyes. Beautiful. Love it. Tanya said identity. My rebel self needs to get some things done next year, hoping that defining my identity, adapted personal trainer, high school girls track and cross country coach, PCA, PE teacher, nutrition coach, business owner, and more will help me stay on track. That's a great idea for rebels identity. Janine says, I have been doing all the work. So next year, my word is allow. <laughs> As in allow others. <laughs> allow, yes. Jean Marie says, Pace, 2022 has been the year of a marathon move as my husband and I are relocating to Spain. And Pace was a reminder to proceed slowly and steadily through the mountain of tasks related to selling our home, moving into temporary housing, navigating the visa application process, and so many other hurdles. Mm. Neil says, done, as in done is better than perfect. In my <laughs> university's theater set workshop, there were two competing signs on the wall. One said in very neat printing, do you want it done now or do you want it done right? And underneath, spray painted in huge sloppy letters, done is good. This is my <laughs> 2023 motto. Oh, excellent. Okay, so here's just like a speed round of ideas from people. Decide, savor, share, water, simplify. Mm. I had simplify one year. Flexible, magic, gentle, Enough, forward, transition, harvest, flowering, healthy, upgrade, margin, flex. That's a big word in the teen community. Whole mm. and reflect. Yeah, those are so great. Here's another one that can use a little explanation. Alicia said, draw. I was inspired by Gretchen to choose a word that has multiple meanings. And my strongest inspiration is to choose a word that's actionable. I struggle with taking action often. And she points out that draw can mean to illustrate, to gently pull in a specific direction, extract, attract, as in draw attention, select at random, so many definitions, and yet they all somehow apply to my vision for 2023. Oh, that's great. Okay, Gretch, on social media from Imp Strikes Back, we got dig because I want to get back to gardening, dig deeper into my interests, and dig into complete pending tasks and projects. Amy chose peacock, a symbol for power, strength, confidence, mm. and even divinity. That was Ooh. Flannery O'Connor symbol was peacock. Oh, Connie said, audible, that's my reminder to listen, really listen more than speak. And it's a reminder to listen when I cannot read. Tip, I actually use Libby through my library before checking audible. And being a football fan, this word reminds me it's helpful to call an audible when life demands it. <laughs> Learning to adjust to life's curveballs is a constant challenge. But when I successfully adapt to life's changing circumstances, I become more resilient, wiser, and stronger. Call an audible. And this is when I saw that I had to look up what call an audible is because like I'd heard that phrase, but I was like, I don't a hundred percent know that I know what it means. And that is when you decide what to do at the last second after seeing all possible options and obstacles that come up. It's ah. a phrase that comes from football. So Elizabeth, drum roll. Yes. What is your word for 2023? Okay, Gretch, my word is scale. Okay, Ooh, so... Lots of meanings. Lots of meanings. I uh, like a word that applies to different things. Um, I've mentioned, I believe on the podcast, that I'm now weighing myself every day, and that's an mm -hmm. important part of my 
type 1 diabetes health journey. I'm using it for that in a very mm-hmm. literal way, stepping on the scale. But also, you know, scaling means growing bigger, like mm-hmm. especially if you're an entrepreneur, yeah, you which I scale. sort of am. Yeah. So I want to scale my business, meaning I would love this year to get another show on the air. Mm-hmm. And then there's also like scaling a summit, which is yeah. climbing a hill. Mm-hmm. It's a reminder to myself that I can scale a summit, a metaphoric right. summit. Right. Probably won't be scaling any actual large mountains. Mm-hmm. Although I guess I scale the hills of Fryman Canyon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. And then, Gretch, you and I were talking about the scales like on a creature mm-hmm. or protection and yeah. keep people from hurting you, right? Mm-hmm. So it's there's a lot there. And then finally, Gretch, of course, the scale is balance. Mm-hmm. And I ordered myself a pin inspired uh. by you <laughs> of a yeah. scale, you know, the old-fashioned Mm. scale that you would use to measure something like in a grocery store where it's like the two balance scales. Yeah. Yes. Because of course it's all the balance, right? Of trying Mm -hmm. to, I I don't like to say a work-life balance because I think that's hard. I think sometimes you focus on work and sometimes you focus on life, but hopefully I can keep it all going. Right. Keep both both sides of the scale full, even if they're not always even. Yes. Yes. I love this for you because I think, it, like, again, it has all those meanings and it's very action. But then there's also the visual because you do love a visual. I've learned that from you. Yes. A listener just sent me like a sweatshirt covered with lightning bolts being like, oh, this made me think of Elizabeth because it's like, it's great to have that visual. It's fun. Yes. But Elizabeth, I have to say, when you mentioned the scales on a creature, <laughs> that did remind me of the pet egg. <laughs> Oh, my God. (laughs) That is true. A pet egg is good for sloughing off the scales. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's that's not the most uh, poetic way to invoke the idea of scale for your 2023. But I must say, it did come into my mind. But I love scale. That's a great word. Yes, it feels poetic to me. I think because I feel like it goes way back. Because of the old fashioned scale. I picture you with like an ice pick in your hand, yes. tackling all these things, <laughs> scaling, scaling. Yes, yeah, scaling, scaling. Yeah. Okay, Gretch, what is your word? Okay, I'm so excited about this word. So, this word is wave, mm. and that has so many meanings. So, back to the five senses, of course, waves are something that come up again and again in the senses because. There are sound waves. There are light waves. There's the feeling of the waves covering your body. You know, that's one of the most intense sensations is like being in the ocean. And I like the idea of with a wave is that it can be a calming wave or it can be like an exciting and crashing wave. It can like carry you forward suddenly or it can gently loft you through the water. And, you know, I have my book coming out. And so I'm going to be going on a book tour and kind of engaging with people in this intense way. And so I will be waving to many people and like (laughs) saying hello. And so I feel like there's that kind of wave. So it's sort of the scientific meaning, the noun, the verb. And here's the thing. Great visual, right? So I go to the Met every day. And if you go to the Met every day and you go to the gift shop, you will know that there are certain works that appear in more things. For whatever reason, these are the things you can buy. Many, many examples of it in the gift shop. And one Hmm. artwork that I love that is all over the gift shop is a very famous print called Under the Wave off Kanagawa, which is also known as the Great Wave. That's probably the name most people know it by. And that's by Katsushika Hukusai. It's one of the most famous artworks in the world. It's from about 1830. And this particular image is especially important to me because it was part of a series of prints called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. And when I wrote my book, 40 Ways to Look at Winston Churchill, this is one of the examples that I used of artwork where it was about the idea of looking at the same thing from many different directions. So that's also part of what I want from Wave is this idea of multiple looks at the same thing, which is kind of like the five senses. So I've got a postcard that I'm holding up of it that I'm going to put on my cork board. I had salt just written. Written, but I think it's more fun to have a visual image. And I got a little, Eliza and Eleanor really got me into these enamel pins that you can put on a backpack or a jacket or whatever. So I drag my backpack with me everywhere. So I can put the way, I, I'm going to use this sketchbook for my ideas as I'm like working towards the publication date of my book. 
and I'll put the postcard on my corkboard. I'll put the enamel pin on my backpack. And so I will be able to keep this idea of wave and like this forward motion and this engagement with uh, my senses. Riding the wave. Riding the wave. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love this, Gretchen. I think it's a beautiful word. I think it's a great image. I mean, again, I love that you're moving from words like delegate and infrastructure (laughs) to salt and wave. I feel like- This is a good sign in your evolution (laughs) as a human being. Well, this is my sister, the sage, because you were doing that. And if I'm like, like, I'm like, I got to take a different attitude towards these words. So let us know if you do try this at home and what word you're planning on choosing for 2023. We love these words. We cannot get enough. They're also thought provoking. Let us know on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Drop us an email at podcast at GretchenRubin.com. Or as always, go to the show notes. This is happiercast.com slash 408 for everything related to this episode. Coming up, we have a holiday shopping happiness hack. But first, this break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, we come into this world without a user's manual. So when things aren't going our way, it's normal to feel stuck. Gretch, for me, whenever I'm stuck in my career, therapy is hugely helpful. Just talking about issues and sort of looking at myself allows me to then move forward. Mm -hmm. And I love that with better help, you can actually do that in your own home. Makes it a lot Mm -hmm. more convenient. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Gretchen Rubin. That's BetterHelp. Help, H-E-L-P dot com slash Gretchen Rubin. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. I mean, I work with a small team and every single person matters so much. It makes hiring so important. And LinkedIn Jobs makes it extremely easy to create a free job post and then to start hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. We're coming up on the end of the year and you want to end strong and the right team member might help you do that. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Gretchen. That's linkedin.com slash Gretchen to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, Elizabeth, it's holiday time, and this is a very helpful holiday shopping hack. Yes, this comes from Jordan. I have to share this hack I started years ago that my kids, 9 and 13 now, still love, shopping for siblings. I schedule a date to go out with each kid alone. We start by going to get lunch or dinner, their choice. Then you go to a store with toys. On the way in, you remind them, we are getting something for your sibling. It's okay to look for you, but think about something they would like. First, there hasn't been a Christmas go by that the gifts from siblings haven't been the favorite gift. And despite the fact that they get older and spend less time together, they still pick out the most thoughtful things. But there's a secret bonus hack here. During the shopping trip, watch your kids' wandering eyes to the toys they want. I will often snap photos on my phone of what they're looking at as grandparents slash extended family ask for gift ideas. Having a photo of it makes sending them to family easy or even to pick things up for them yourself. Well, Elizabeth, this caught my eye when it came in because I had just been nagging you to give me ideas for Jack yes. because you want to give them something they really want, but yes. it's hard to know from the outside. But then that puts so much pressure on you as a parent to like, you've got to think of gifts 
and generate all these ideas for other people. So I thought, well, this is a great idea. If there's a sibling yes. handy, ask them. They probably know very well. So I thought this was this was a great, great solution. And what I also love about it, Gretch, is that it's teaching the sibling how you go about going out and being thoughtful and thinking about yes. gifts because it's a kind of a ritual that you have to practice. Yes. It doesn't yes. just come out of nowhere. Right. So I thought yes. that was another added bonus. And it's a lovely time to spend time with your child uh, yeah. by himself or herself. And uh, we've heard from a lot of people who say that's something that they want to do more of, but it can be hard to fit it in. So this is another way to create a little tradition around generosity yes. and thoughtfulness. That's also getting a little bit of uh, getting a little bit of uh, yes. task crossed <laughs> off the list. So yes. perfect. Great yes. hack. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Gretchen, it is time for a know yourself better question. Okay, this is a little bit about like how have you ever saved someone's life or had your life change? I can't say that this gives you deep insight into something like how to change your habits, but it's interesting to think about and it's interesting mm. to talk about. So maybe this is the kind of thing where it's a know yourself better question that's great if you're like trying to have a, a deeper conversation with a friend or a family member because it is absolutely fascinating to read people's answers. When I asked on social media... Have you ever had an uncanny experience where you seem to see a ghost, leave your body, perceive reality in a different way, hear a divine voice? It's an interesting question to think about that sort of gets you focused on transcendent matters and experiences. But Lisa, I have to say, I've never had an uncanny experience. And I don't think you have either, unless you had one and didn't tell me. <laughs> no, I have, Gretch. What? One time when mom what? and dad what? were out of... What? Yes. What? How is this possible? Yes. Well, see, this is why people should have this conversation. I know. Okay. I was in high school. Mom and dad were out of town. I was sleeping in their bed for some reason. Very early in the morning, you were in college, so you were away. I heard footsteps coming down the hall and oh, coming oh into the room. And I mean, I was Beyond. terrified. But I got up. No one was there. I checked the whole house. But I mean, I was so freaked out, Gretch, that I called Sarah, who's now my writing partner, <laughs> And she came over at like 7.30 in the morning because I was like, I don't know if this was a ghost or what, but I am oh so gosh. scared. And she came over, which was very nice of her. So that's the only, maybe it was wow. a dream, but boy, I mean, I was pinching myself. You know, I was right. very awake. By oh, the way, yeah. my mother-in-law, Ramona, her mom called her twice from the beyond, she says. How? And she's still to this day regretful because when her mom called the first time, I don't remember what happened the second time, Ramona was so startled to hear her mother's voice, she hung up. And then she's been regretting it ever since. Oh, my. But she heard her mother's voice in the phone? Yes, yeah, saying Ramona. Oh, my god! And she absolutely lost it. And my father-in-law was there, you know, in the room when this all went down. So he oh. verifies. I, that's all I can tell you. That was her experience okay. that her mom called wow. her twice. Wow. Who she misses very much. Wow. What an intense experience. Okay. So here's some from listeners. Shah said, my uncle had recently died. I placed his funeral pamphlet on the chair beside my bed and it fell to the floor. I retrieved it and placed it on the chair. The pamphlet fell to the floor between my bed and the chair two more times. The third time, my hand felt the heat of a very, very hot extension cord plug that had just in that moment started to smoke. I was very tired that night and knew I would have slept heavily. I believe he saved my my life. Sasha says, yes, I saw what I believe was my dad's spirit the night before he was taken off life support. A beautiful electric blue orb floating in front of my window, a window that had no view or access to anything electrical. I was just a kid, so I had no idea the decision was being made or anything like that. Wow, that gives me the chills. Wendy said, I was 16 in high school. My mom and I were very close. My mom was in the last stages of cancer. I got a feeling, I still cannot describe it, had a strong sense to leave early. I, for some reason, noted the time. I was informed later that day of her passing, it was the same time. Aw. Mm. Yeah. 
Janine says, I lost my dad in 2019 and twice in the first few months after his passing, I just felt him there with me for a minute. I wasn't even thinking about him or doing anything that reminded me of him in the moment, but then I had this overwhelming sense of his presence and it was very comforting. And I was not, am not spiritual at all. Ah. Lori said, I was sitting with my elderly mom in the hospital a few months before she passed. Suddenly, I could smell my dad's aftershave. He had been gone more than 20 years at that time. Oh, that's a, mm. that scent memory. Pat said, yes, I do get visions, but I can't control them. I call it the voice. The voice has said, look up so-and-so on the internet, and I found news that helped a custody case. It said, the police are here, and I went downstairs to find them walking up my driveway. Long story why. I felt hopeless and the voice sang Amazing Grace to me. I know this sounds nuts, but it all really happened and more. Wow. Gosh. And then I love this one. Amanda said, as my now husband walked down my sidewalk to pick me up for our first date, I saw a flash of light and a voice said to me, you could marry this guy. <laughs> 22 years of marriage later, I am very happy I paid attention. Aw, oh. that's so nice. That's so fascinating. And Elizabeth, I learned something about you. I, I mean, I cannot believe I never yes. knew that. Damn. Yes. I'm knowing you better. Yeah, Gretch, there's always something new to uncover. We think we've covered it all, <laughs> but we haven't. <laughs> all right, coming up, I give myself a soccer-related demerit. But first, this break. Rakuten is the smartest and most rewarding way to shop and save. Get cash back at over 3,500 stores. Membership is free and it's easy to sign up. I mean, these days we're all thinking about our holiday gift buying. And through Rakuten, you can find clothing and shoes, toys and games, electronics, kitchen and home essentials. So many stores participate like Macy's, Adidas, American Eagle, Brooks Brothers, places that we're going to buy those holiday gifts. Yes, I love Rakuten, Gretch. Anytime I'm going to order something, first I go to Rakuten and then I go to the store and I know that I'm going to earn cash back. And it just makes me feel good about doing my holiday shopping, <laughs> which, yes, I have already started. Oh. Rakuten deposits your cash back directly into your PayPal account or they can send you a check. Visit Rakuten.com or download the app to earn cash back when you shop at thousands of stores. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N.com. Sign up and you can start saving today. Caraway has the entire kitchen in mind from cookware to bakeware, tea kettles, and their latest release of food storage. Caraway's holiday event has been extended so you can get non toxic kitchenwares at the best prices. Save up to 20% on all Caraway products, including their internet famous non toxic cookware set. I have to say, I have the mini fry pan, and there's all these colors that you can choose from. And I got a blue that exactly matches the blue of my stove, so it looks great sitting on a burner, and it also is so easy and convenient to use. And ceramics naturally slick surface means minimal oil or butter for slide off the pan eggs and easy cleaning. Visit carawayhome.com to take advantage of their cyber season event and score up to 20% off your next purchase of non-toxic kitchenware. This deal won't last long, so visit carawayhome.com to shop all their incredible products for up to 20% off this holiday season. Caraway. Okay, Elizabeth, it is time for demerits and gold stars. This is an even-numbered episode, which means it's your turn to talk about a demerit. Yes, Gretchen, I am giving myself a demerit for not getting into the World Cup frenzy. Mm. Everyone was mm. got so much joy out of watching the U.S. in the World Cup and the World Cup in general. Yeah. And I just failed to get into it. Well, you and me both. This is a demerit yes. that covers both of us. Yep. And I'm like, this could have been a fun family activity. I could yeah. have learned. It could have just had that feeling of sort of Olympics kind of feeling. Yeah. But I, I did not do it. So I missed yeah. out on that bit of happiness. Yeah, me too. I mean, like, first of all, I would have had to learn the rules of soccer, though I guess I get it when like the ball it's goes pretty in the goal. Simple. That, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> 
Okay, Gretch, what's your gold star? Okay, I'm getting a double gold star for Asha Curran and Giving Tuesday. Okay, so I was at a conference and I met a woman, Asha Curran, and she is the CEO of something called Giving Tuesday. Now, we often talk about catalysts for reflection and action, and Black Friday here in the United States is the traditional start of holiday shopping, so there's sort of a frenzy of shopping on Black Friday. Then they introduced Cyber Monday, which is the online version, So that came about with the internet. And then, Gretchen, there's also Small Business Saturday. Yes, right. Another prompt for a certain kind of action. Um, And so Giving Tuesday is a day to remember to give. So all these days, you know, you've got... Friday, Saturday, Monday, and then Tuesday is the day to give. And on November 29th, 2022, in the U.S., more than $3.1 billion was raised in 24 hours for causes, communities, and nonprofits. Um, Now people do it across the world. It's been going for 10 years. It was started at the 92nd Street Y here in New York, which is a great organization. I love a catalyst. It's a day for the calendar of catalysts. And I give Asha Curran and Giving Tuesday a gold star for just reminding everybody to remember to be generous when we're getting a lot of reminders to spend. That's great. Giving Tuesday. And then the resources for this week. Okay, we're offering a new jumpstart in the app. If you are using the Happier app, it's all around keeping a journal. It will start on December 18th and the content will refresh every day. And it's about to help you start and keep the habit of keeping a journal, which is something that many people talk about wanting to do and can be a great tool in a variety of different ways to help you keep a habit. There are seven days of concrete prompts, so you can download the Happier app from the App Store or Google Play. Uh, You can go to thehappierapp.com if you want to learn more. And if you're already using Happier on December 18th, check your home screen and all will be revealed. Nice. Yeah. So, Elizabeth, what are we reading? Elizabeth, what are you reading? Gretch, I have not been reading this the last week. I have been exhausted. Oh, Next yeah. week, I will have something I am reading. How about you? I am reading Trust by Hernan Diaz. And that's it for this episode of Happier. Remember to try this at home. Choose your one-word theme for the year. Let us know if you tried it and if it worked for you and what your one-word theme or phrase is. Thanks to our executive producer, Chuck Reed, and everyone at Cadence 13. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram at Gretchen Rubin, and I'm at Liz Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And there's a Liz. Here it comes. If you like the show, please be sure to tell a friend. Text them the link, the episode, if you think that they would be interested in hearing about One Word Themes, Uncanny Experiences, Holiday Hacks, or anything, because that is how most people discover our show. Until next week, I'm Elizabeth Kraft. And I'm Gretchen Rubin. Thanks for joining us. Onward and Upward. Gretch, I can't believe I didn't mention my other uncanny experience, which what? was, well, remember Amy, who cleaned my apartment uh, once yeah. a week for years and years. She yeah. said that she could see dead people and had a whole other life in that way. And don't yeah. you remember, she kept telling me I was sick. She yes. said, Liz, you're very sick. You're very yes. sick. You need to go to the doctor and... Every week, she she just kept grilling me about had I gone to the doctor, and I finally went, and that's when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and the, the uh, doctor was like, wow, I can't believe you're not in the hospital right now. You know, I can't believe you're just walking around, living your life. So... She was right. Well, I remember that she had said to you, I think you need to go to the doctor, but I didn't realize all that backstory. Wow, that's that's intense. Yep. From the Onward Project.